Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. My company is Crystal Edge Technology Screens. Uh, today, we're going to be navigating through eBay to uh, look for projectors. I actually got a couple more there. I've got my eye on a few Chrissy's and a couple of short though projectors I need for work. Especially, I need uh, for this new screen paint we're working on. We're working on a kind of a silver kind of screen paint. You're not supposed to be in here, you know that, right? We're working on a silver kind of screen paint. We're going to need a certain, we're going to need low caliber projectors for that. I'm going to my projector section over here. These are all my projectors I own. Some of them. Ouch. What the heck was that? I got more than this, but hey, there's some of the projectors I own. I need this one. This is a good one for work. So we're developing a silver screen paint and I need low lumen projectors for that job. And I need a couple more off of eBay. But I'm going to show you what to look for and what not to look for and not to fall into certain traps because I just saw something on there a few minutes ago. I saw a Phillips smart projector and I feel sorry for the people that are bidding on it because they're about to get duped. Because uh, the, all the warning signs are there that you want to stay away from that particular bidding and on that projector. All right, I think we got enough stuff already. We don't need anything else. Yeah, that's a Sony right there. I got that one. That's got that one an unboxing because the person bought it, un opened it up. That's another thing to look for unboxing. Unboxings are good because that means you got a brand new lamp in there. Projector's brand new. Only problem is the person is when they open it up, decided they didn't want to send it back. And because they opened it up, you get it for cheap. That's a $1,500 projector I got for 500 bucks. That is interactive, which means it comes with pens that allows me to be able to write on the screen and all that other cool stuff. You know, it came without the software, everything that came with it. And I got it for pretty much next to nothing because somebody opened up the box. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giddy up. You got your own room. Just got finished buying stuff for your new room today. I bought all new stuff for his room today. All right, so we're going to go in here. I saw it. I saw the projector because it was actually one I was looking for. It's a Phillips. I got a list of projectors that I'm hunting for. One of them is a Phillips. A customer of mine had one. I loved the projector so much because it was a really small, short, ultra short though projector, which is fantastic that I need for work. And I just couldn't if I can't find one. And not for the price. They, the new ones they want they want like seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars for them. But this one, they wanted only um they only want two hundred dollars for it. And I'm thinking like something's wrong with it. But I already seen already. I'll show you in a few minutes. So, like I said, ultra short throw. These ultra short throws right here are fantastic. If you want an ultra short throw, you don't want to spend a lot of money. You don't want to break the bank. These projectors are fantastic. I've bought six of these right here. This projector right here, we've used them. I matter of fact, I got one right there. I used, it, I used these on my, on my theater room. This one right here, uh, they're about, I wouldn't pay no more than $200 for them. That's why I wouldn't pay no more than $200. That's it. I got that one for 60 bucks. I bought that from a church. When I got that here and I set it up, I was like, oh, I got to get more of these. Went online, got a couple. of. Now, there's a different ones between those. They all look alike, but they got different features on them. This one right here is the, uh, sorry, I got paint on my, I'm still working. The UW351, uh, I'm sorry, uh, UM351W. Uh, the difference between that one and that one, I know they look exactly alike. The difference is this one doesn't have a position bar on it. So the position bar, say you got your projector sitting on the floor like mine sitting on the floor, and your screen without that position bar is going to land right up here by the ceiling. That's where it's going to land at. But with the position bar in here, you can move the screen down, boom, and fit it in and put it in the spot. That's why I like this one right here. So this one right here, the model number for this one, sorry about the mic projector being dirty, is a UM361X. That's the one you want to get. That's the one that has the position bar in it. That allows me to move it right into place when I want to set it up. That one was 60 bucks because I got that on a church from a church. That's another thing too. You want to check out Goodwill. Goodwill posts a lot of projectors. Definitely want to go in. I got a brand new Panasonic from there one time from a Goodwill auction. Uh, got it for $139. Just had to replace the lamp. And there's a few things you want to look at too when you're talking about venues. Some people have no idea what they're talking about when they're talking about venue projectors. They have no idea what they're talking about. Venue projectors, you can buy one for like two or three hundred bucks 
and it can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars just to replace two key items on it, which is the lamp and your lens can cost you so much money because the venues like those big boys over there, usually if you buy one of those brand new, um, you're not, you're not getting a lens with it. A lens will not come with it at all, period. They give you the option to choose what lens you want to put into it. Usually it's rare that you will find a venue projector with a short throw, an, a, an interesting lens already installed, because usually they pull those out and put the standards in. Because the lens is actually, on that projector, the lens is actually worth more than the projector. Heck, my filter on the side, it cost 300 bucks to replace my filter. My filter gets damaged, that's $300 to replace a filter on the side of that projector. A lot of people don't realize that parts for that projector are very expensive. But the projector itself, probably like five, $600 on eBay. A lens you may be to get for maybe like $800, $900, depending. That's like a standard. But when you talk about short throw and ultra short throw lenses, then you cost about a couple thousand dollars easily. So usually, if you get one of these that has a short throw lens on it, you grab it. Because that's a gold mine right there. Because the lenses are very expensive on them. Worst upon worst, if you get your hands on a barcode. Now, a barcode, on the other hand, parts on that are going to be expensive regardless. You're going to pay a couple thousand dollars for a barcode. Usually, it's rare to find a barcode that has a lens attached to it. Because a lens on a barcode, you're talking about $10,000 for a lens. I'm not joking with you. Ultra short throw lenses, it's nothing you got to watch out for, too. Because they'll say that the lens is an ultra short throw lens. An ultra short throw lens looks weird. You'll see what they look like. They got a weird lens to them. Kind of looks like a, uh, kind of like a, I forgot the name for them things from G.I. Joe has them. Kind of a weird kind of a telescope design. But I'll show you what it looks like. So anyway, this is what prompt me to come in here. And this projector is garbage. I wouldn't even touch it with 10 foot. This is what you got to worry about. Now you see this listing right here? You see how there's no picture of the projector? You got a better chance with this one you have with this one this is what you got to worry about it's a picture it's a picture they could have snapped off google they could have took it off any place and they put it up here you have no pictures of the actual projector which means there could be blemishes it could be cracks it could be anything and on that projector you would know due to the fact that you don't have the physical projector there to be to zoom up on it to see if there's any cracks and if you have a, cr a large crack in the side of a projector you really wouldn't touch it because the chassis on the projector is pretty well made. Whatever dropped on top of it, or however they dropped it to crack the chassis, there's a good chance there's probably more damage inside. It just hasn't popped up yet. These are actually good projectors. I actually bought quite a few of these. I got two of these right here. The Epson projectors, the short throw. I got quite a few of those. I actually have a five, I think it's a 585 and a 275 in the next room. I actually own two of these. The 275 comes with VGAs. The adapters work to a certain degree with them. The 585 comes with two HDMI ports. That's another thing I'm going to show you about on Chrissy too. When a guy was coming to talk about projectors and stuff, he couldn't tell the difference between, and he knew venue projectors. What's the difference between the LXW, the LXW400, and the LX400? They look exactly the same if you look at them. Now, there's two key features. The LX is actually a, uh, they're both 720p. Uh, one is actually um, 600 by 800 res, the other one, I, I forgot the resolution on that one. But that's the difference between those two. And then it's one with the bridge and without the bridge. So the bridge is basically is a bridge that comes across the projector right here. One has a bridge and one doesn't have a bridge. The one without the bridge comes with a really high-end um, standard uh, throw lens. And the one with the bridge comes with a basic there's a difference between the two. You get a much more sharper one without the bridge. So that's why you have to look at the Christie's. All the Christie's particular models, those particular models all look exactly the same. You have to know which ones you're actually getting. That sounds confusing. Yeah, you buy... Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This can't be real. How many are there? Are they a piece? Or is it a whole bundle? Is that the whole lot? Let me see. What are they selling? Epson 520s. Oh, that's a good one. Epson 520 is a real good one, too. Look at them. They got a whole bunch of those projectors in there. Epson 520 is a good one. You don't want the Epson, what was the Epson uh, 525, I think it is? Because one comes, one of the Epsons, there's two models that make these. I know the 520 comes with HDMI ports. The other one doesn't come with it. There's another model of it. I think it's a 420 that doesn't come with an HDMI port. 
but this is actually pretty good. And he got them for 200. See, these are the ones I hunt for. This is where I shop. This is where I like to shop. This area right here, I like the lots. The lots, man, because you get a good deal, especially if they got pictures on them already. Yeah, I had, I actually had two of these before. 2,700 lumens. Now that's another thing you want to do too. Now, when you see your projector here, you want to make sure the specifications that they're giving you on the projector are correct. Because some people will embellish their projectors. I'm not saying everybody will, but some people will. So we got the 520 here, right? You copy and paste the 520 from there. And you go into Projector Central. That's where you want to go. Projector Central will tell you whether or not if you're getting the real deal or you're getting a lie on your projector. Because I've had bought a projector and they said, well, the projector had a short throw and blah, 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 and got the projector central and found it wasn't a short throw projector. It was a basic long throw projector. That's all it was. So we'll go to uh, projector central. Projector central. You know, I met the people over at projector central. I was doing a little job over there. And one of the guys I had it was working on with a business deal. I actually knew the editor at projector central. All right, let's see. This is, this is, I love this site so much. This is where I learned to build a lot of my 235.1s. My customized 235.1 screens, I go here to build them. All right, so you go right up to the top. Um, hold on for a minute. I need to bring this up a little bit. Bring this up a little bit. How can we bring this up a little bit here? We got the room here. No, nope, nope. No. Kind of clear on my stand. I got another spot I can click it. There we go. There we go. better. All right, so right there. At the top where you have the search bar at, you just click on this and you just go in and you put the projector that you want to put in there, which is the Epson 520. And then you go for a searching on that one. And then when that pops up at the bottom, you will get two links, a couple of links here. You don't want to look for the one for under specifications. That's what you're going to look for. It should be here. This is one it should be underneath of. Let's just go click on this one see what we get. No, that's not what we want. Now that projector, I guess, no, we don't need all this, please. Give me that. We don't need all that. Oh, that's not necessary. Take that off. Thank you. All right. This one, there's, they sold it over here for around $849, which is not bad. Consider the fact that you're going to get it for like two something. But you still want to make sure you're getting exactly what you're getting. Let me see. Projector central ad. I don't want that. Here we go, specifications. Isn't one of those links, you have to figure out which one it is. All right, so you go in here, and this will tell you exactly what you're getting. All right, so let me see. Let's go down here, and let's go look it up. Okay, right here, this is where you get all your information, where all your goodies pop up. So I go here all the time to make sure I'm getting exactly what I'm buying. All right, so, let's just continue to 20, actually, it was actually releasing. 2014. We usually most my projectors anyway. 2700 lumens. Okay. Uh, let me see. When it says this right here, some people get really confused on this. When it says 4.3, it doesn't mean the projector only does 4.3. You can think about it. The only projectors only do 4.3 are projectors that were manufactured past 1999. Now I got a couple of those and they do 4.3. But I don't know why they put 4.3. I went and got the um, the PX747 projectors as the same thing. It says 4.3. It does more than that. You'll have 4.3, 6.9, 235.1, oh, oh, panorama, all that's in those particular projectors. So just because it says 4.3 doesn't mean the projector only does 4.3. It does more than 4.3. They just have it listed at just 4.3. Because some people get confused on it. They buy it. They don't want to go near it because it only does 4.3. No, it does more than 4.3. They just have it listed at 4.3. This is an XGA. So you know that it's not a WXGA or a WXGA. It's going to be an XGA projector. But that's better than an SVGA. But then again, you have something called Super SVGA. You heard about that before? Usually venue projectors have Super SVGA. It's a more advanced version of SVGA. It's still a 600 by 800 res, but just a more advanced version of it. All right. So yeah, so make sure everything is good. So you want to make sure the specifications they have here are matching what you're looking for on eBay. I'm actually in here looking for a train set. I just happened to pop on this bid. I found this bid that was going on. I was like, hmm, I should definitely buy this. So they have the picture here. These are right here. It's right here. I'm worrying about that right there. Just make sure that first picture is legit. And it's a picture. Oh, it comes with the remote control. Now, see, that's a good deal. I've had these before. I might just buy one of these. 
for the sake of just buying one because I could always use an extra short throw projector in the house. I already got two of them in here. It's always good to have a third one. The one I have over here on the, that one right there, that's a hard one to get. That's a really hard one to get. I'll have the model number for that one. Those are hard to get. And you get these projectors. I got lucky. I got that projector for $139. I wanted to get another one for it. They want like $800, $900 for it. I don't know why, but that particular NEC projector, they want so much more money for it. Uh, that right there is in focus on that side over there. I got that for 50 bucks. That's a really, really, really good projector for 50 bucks. Actually, a customer actually advised for me to get that one, and I bought it, and I haven't regretted it. That's all digital. I mean, digital, the entire top board of it is all digital touch display. It's beautiful. All right, so that's not a bad deal. This is actually a really, really, really good deal right here. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm, I know where this is going to be at anyway. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll come and sign out of my account, come back in, find this link, put it back in so you guys can have it. But this is a really good deal. So these are the ones I like. I like the lots. I do like to buy the lots because there's plenty of them. Uh, if you buy one and decide you want to go get another one, they're always there. That's the same thing I posted about the fellow who sold me the projector, um, the um, the uh, Chrissy 1080p projector. Bought one, got it over here. I said, wow, posted the link, had everybody else buying them. They sold out. So this is pretty good. You got to look for these lots. These lots are pretty good. In case you want to put a projector in every part of your house, this is the first place to start at because this is a good price for this price right here. $220. That is not bad. What's the, what's the shipping on? And the shipping is, let me see, let me get it. Shipping's free. Let me see. Okay. Well, I'm not charging anything for shipping. Yeah, shipping's free. So can't beat that with a baseball bat. That's actually pretty good. This is actually a very good projector right here. So I've had quite a few of these. I'm going to definitely buy one of these. Now, this one right here is 27. The one I have behind me is 36. But then again, it's a short throw projector. Like the distance throw isn't you know, I mean, that far from the screen. You don't really need it that bright to begin with. And if you're doing a long throw on the other hand. Yeah, you would pretty much be required to have that. All right, that's a done deal. I'm going to leave that right there so we can come back to that. I can come back to that later on and put that link for you guys at the bottom. All right. Um, here it is, the 410. So this is a 4 I wasn't off by, by too much. There's a 410 and a, and a 510. 20 no no wait wait wait, wait. Sorry, sorry sorry yeah yeah this is the 520 that's the 530 this is the 410 the 520 has hmi ports the 410 doesn't have an hmi port still good projector but it doesn't have the only thing it doesn't have it doesn't have the hmi port do you have a picture of the back of it yeah we did a picture of the back of it so see what i mean right here there's no hmi port from one end to the next, there's no HM port. This is actually a VGA projector only. Don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. You go and get yourself a VGA adapter. I have a bunch of them in the house. I use this. I use them for. Um, I did a demonstration where I did a VGA adapter versus HDMI port. You couldn't tell one from the other. The signal one on the H VGA port was actually fantastic. I use them for gaming. So when I play the games so sometimes downstairs, I have an adapter which converts the VGA into HDMI, and I'm actually playing it off an adapter to do that works out fantastic so this right here not a problem at the end of the day like i said you can buy the adapter for this the only problem i had with this was the fact that before i found the gaming adapter was i'll put the links we get the gaming adapters at too um uh, with the gaming adapter uh well actually the h the one i had downstairs doesn't work on gaming at all you can't plug it to your xbox and that won't pick up but that particular one I have for playing my PS4 off, that thing picks up everything, the Xbox, everything. So that eliminates the fact of having to have an HDMI port in the back of it just for gaming because, you know, before I had the Fire Sticks, I was using my PS4 to run media through for display. And I couldn't run it through that particular unit because it wouldn't pick up on the regular adapter that I had. But now I have the gaming adapter. Well, it works out fine. So I can buy one of these two now next to and work with two. So this one's actually the only difference between this one. This one doesn't have the HM ports, and it's probably less luminous, a little bit less luminous. But other than that, goodbye. $55. They want $55 for this. Boy, I could be I could sell stuff on eBay with no problem. Other people's stuff I can sell. I don't I used to sell on eBay. I used to be a top seller on eBay. So vintage toys. Don't do that anymore. I sold vintage toys to support my company. Did you know that? So basically when Digital One Crystal Screen Paint was first started off. Um, I didn't take a loan from the bank or anything. I took it out of my own pocket. And how I did it was I basically uh, uh, went on a search and hunt 
for vintage factory seal toys, and that's what I sold on eBay to support my company, Digital and Crystal Screen Paint. Yep. People are like, you're crazy. You didn't have any vintage toys. What are you talking about? You're insane. Eh. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. That's a uh, Super Hulk lunchbox in mint condition. Here's G.I. Joe. Yep, I got about 20 of those mint condition in the box. Yeah, that's the uh, Periscope. Yeah, they're worth quite a bit. Uh, what else we got? Uh, brand new in a box. I got a warehouse full of this stuff. Um, you ever heard of the Dunkin' Yo-Yos? Who, who was from that era that remembers Dunkin' Yo-Yos? I got about a thousand of these mint condition in a box. You know, like, look at this, look at this right here. 1960 laser gun with the original sparks. I got about 60 of those in a box. Yep, just happened to walk in at the right place at the right time. The only stuff that I would buy had to be mint condition and had to be in a box. That was my rule. This is some other toys I had. Got Transformers, I have G.I. Joe's, I got all of them in a box, mint condition, Super Soakers, all that good stuff from back in the day, He-Man, all that stuff, pinball machines, Frogger, laser tag, you name it, Barbies, the whole nine yards. How? Don't own a time machine? No. Simple and plain. Very easy way to find vintage toys and things, you go to the mom and pops. You know mom and pops you go to? The Asians. You know why? They never throw out their inventory. Never, never throw out the inventory. It could be defective, whatever it may be, they'll never throw it out. They don't. And people understand, they are the hidden gems of finding vintage factory seal items that are worth a lot of money because they don't throw away their inventory. So I happen to be walking through, make condition in the box, never opened. I happen to be walking through, going, going to training, and walking through, and I seen this store that had quad squeaks seats in the in the um in a box, brand new quad squeaks in a box, everything right in the window. Like people were walking by, this didn't know that these are brand new quad squeaks. You know how much quad squeaks cost? Brand new in the window from the seventies. So the problem is, is that if you don't know what a vintage item looks like, you could pass it by a hundred times, and you wouldn't even know we were passing by millions of dollars. Wouldn't even know sitting right in your face. There are items sitting along the earth. I told you, I can't take everything with you, remember, when you pass away. So there are things laying upon the earth that you wouldn't even know that were worth money because you don't even know what you're looking at. You have to know what you're staring at. So my mother was an antique collector. That's how I got picked it up from her. So I know how to walk it. I know how to look at fine bone china, all that stuff. I can tell how much it's worth just by staring. I know exactly what it is. I'll get on my phone. I start punching it up, go to auctions, figure out exactly how much it costs, and buy the whole lot, walk out of there with a couple, a couple thousand dollars worth of merchandise. So I walk into these shops, and I would see vintage stuff all over the place. The thrift stores, the old thrift stores, not the new ones, the old thrift stores. Because you have a lot of these people, elderly people, who have items that... They don't want them anymore, and they either give them away. And these things are sitting down there, and people don't even know what they are. They walk right past them. I walked into a shop one time. I saw an 18, I think 1826. I got it on YouTube. I'll find it. I think 1826 Singer sewing machine that basically you operate it with a foot pedal. No, no, no motor, nothing. I mean, just pushing back and forth. Swing. I said, how you operate it? It's a swing, a swing pedal back and forth. This is worth $6,000. It was sitting right there in the middle of the floor. People were walking right past it, didn't even know what it was. I got it for 80 bucks. Bought it right there on the spot. I was like, I want that right there. That's what I want. You got any more of those that came in today? No? Okay, I'll take that right there. It looks six grand. Six grand. I got to get appraisal on everything. It was worth $6,000. No one knew. Most heartbreaking thing, two of the most heartbreaking things I've seen as a collector, and I mean really to this day, it still tears me up to think about it. I had a friend of mine who had got a store, and in the bottom of her store, she had three... Uh, uh, antique uh, um, cash registers. I'm talking about the ones that have, when you press the buttons and they have the for sale sign that pops up. One was in silver, one was plated in gold, and I forgot, a copper. That one was copper. You know what she did with them? She threw them in the trash. All three of them threw them in the trash. She was telling me she found some old dusty machines down there, took a couple of pictures. I was like, oh my goodness, you have any idea what them things were worth when you threw them in the trash. Now, eventually, somebody smart enough is going to see them and they probably picked them up already. But they were worth quite a lot of money. And she threw them in the trash. Like I said, it's worthless to you if you don't know what you're looking at. The other thing that I saw that pretty much 
was was pretty much crushed my soul was there was an old church around the corner from me. They didn't rip it down. It's going now. But it's an old church. And the preacher on the church was trying to get a grant from the city to actually restructure the church. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Antique, gorgeous church. Everything in that church was beautiful, right? So down in the basement, deep down in the basement, they had a thrift store down there. That's another place you can look to. They had a thrift store. And a lot of my, the members that they had in this church, think about it, down through time, from whatever the church first established, could have been the 1920s, 1930s. These are people that would donate their stuff to the church. And then you're talking about um, uh, oh, record players and musical equipment and fur coats, stuff from that era, dishes and oh, even even war medals. You would see in that different different eras are being donated to this to this church. You know, most people would pass over stuff like that. They wouldn't even bother with stuff like that, not knowing that stuff is worth a ton of money. So anyway, the church was selling it off. Hey, you scratching my chair. The church was selling it off, you know what I mean, for a very good, reasonable price. They had baseball cards down there. Oh, my goodness, the stuff they had. It was unbelievable. It was like, it was like walking into King Solomon's. It was like unbelievable. And especially when you're a collector, your mind's exploding. Oh, my goodness, all this stuff is popping. You're like, wow, this stuff is worth so much money. It's unbelievable. Like, I'm telling the guy, like, look, you can have an auction. You can sell all this stuff off and rebuild a church. You don't even need a grant from the from the, um, from the um from the uh from the uh from the uh from the, from the government or whatever you could do it yourself because you have enough stuff in here to do it and i'm trying to tell him how to do it but he's not listening so later on there are things in the church that are falling down i think one of the things that collapsed in the church was the bell tower the bell completely disconnected fell made it boom that was the end of it the neighbor had enough of the church fully collapsing they put in petition to have the church torn down so I explained to them, I was like, look, man, what you need to do is you need to get all the stuff that's in the bottom of this church, put them in as many U-Haul trucks. I will pay for the storage. We'll put it all in storage and we'll go from there. At least we can donate and build another church from there. Or, you know, you can add to the church or get for the homeless, whatever. Something can be done with it. He did nothing. And you know what happened to all that stuff? Chandeliers, all stuff that you can't even believe. I mean, chandeliers from the 1920s and 1930s. I mean, really old stuff. Pianos, you name it. It was down there. You know what happened to all that stuff? It got buried. The city came in and they destroyed the church. And they buried everything into a massive landfill. It's right there. All of it is buried under the earth. That's where it's at. All of it. Jewelry, and I'm talking about jewelry, everything you could possibly think of that if you thought that when you're watching an old movie, and you think if I had a time machine, I would go back and just grab this and grab that and take it back here and sell for a lot of money. It was in that place because you got to think of all the older people that were passing on that were taking us up and they were donated to the church. Yep. But these are the places you got to go to to look up and find a lot of this antique stuff. It's there. It's there. Like the sneaker heads. The sneaker, I know a lot of sneaker heads. And the sneaker heads, the first thing they do is they hit the mom and pops. They do. Because the mom and pops, especially the older the mom and pops, you know what I mean? Especially, like I said, when it comes with the, the Asians, um, they don't throw away a lot of their stuff. And you could find a lot of the old sneakers that you could never find anymore. They would have the mint condition in a box and stacks back there. And sneaker heads would go back there and pay and buy everything up they got. Yeah, they know. They know about it, too. They know where to go. But that's where you got to go. All right. So, let's muddle through this. But yeah, that's what I was doing. I was selling on eBay to uh, some of my stuff. I had so much inventory, it wasn't even funny. The guy who I bought this stuff from, when I told you I was going back and forth to training, I saw the skates in there. I wanted to buy the skates for eBay. Oh my goodness, man, when he turned those, those lights in the back, the stuff he had back there was freaking unbelievable. You're talking about Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, you're talking about freaking uh, My Little Pony, stuff like that. How you know much a My Little Pony sells for on the internet? A real, legit My Little Pony? I got it for $1.38, right? I got it for 800 bucks. Somebody paid $800 for a My Little Pony mint condition in a box from that era. Not from this era, from that era. Hey, what are you doing, man? You better go run somewhere, nut job. Yeah, I, I, just unbelievable. Boy, I'm telling you, stuff you had back there. See so you know what I did? I went to my bank account and grabbed 10 grand. Called a couple of friends of mine, because I don't drive, especially trucks. And I was like, dude, I need to rent a U-Haul truck. I need you to help me. We got to unload the store real quick. I'm going to pay this guy 10 grand. I'm going to clean out the store. And that's what I did. That's why this stuff is sitting in storage. All I do is just pay whatever my warehouse storage, my fees, and that's it. Some of the stuff I bought here. 
We're going to, oh, wait, I'm getting off topic again. I'm sorry. I do apologize. We we'll, we'll just make that for another topic right there. I'm going to show you some of the stuff we have upstairs. We'll, we'll do that another time. The sewing machine I left behind. $8,000 sewing machine I left behind because I wasn't going to sell it. I wasn't going to sell it because once you start collecting stuff for a while, you don't want to give up. You want to sell it. It's yours. But I left it behind because then you start realizing as you get older, you start collecting less because you realize that you're not taking it with you. It'll be on the earth for somebody else. Yeah, somebody else will get something better use out of it. All right, let's continue on from here. So this is not bad. This is 55. Is he selling a lot? Is this is $55. Does he have a bunch of or this is just one for $55? Let me see. What's he got here? And this is not bad for 55 It's $55. Think about it. So that's not a bad deal right there. Buy now at the cart. That's not a bad deal. That's actually really, really good. And it's got all the pictures to go with it. Yeah, I told you, I get, I talk, start talking about one thing, start thinking about collecting again. I'm not collecting anymore, I'm done. All right, let me see. Can we get out of this, please? We're right, right here. I bet you that projector's going too. Somebody probably bought it, but I'm not going there, I think, anyway, because there's no pictures attached to it. That's actually a really good projector. Actually, this is a 5.95. Do I have one of these? No, I don't have one of them. Hold on for a minute. Which one do I? Have? I got. I know I got a 5.85, right? This one I got brand new in the box. Yeah, mine's a 5.85. This is a newer model than mine. This is actually a really good projector. The stand, on the other hand, you don't get the stand with it. That's still what I was telling you about there. The stand, you don't get with it. Oh, while we're in here, might as well just explain it to you about the Chrissy's. All right, so um, I gave one of these away. I think I did one of my Chrissy's projectors away. All right, see the projectors right here we have here? The Chrissy's right here. All right, this one right here. I might yank them out. Let me bring them out so you can see exactly what you're getting yourself into. Oh, and if they're black, they cost you a little money too, but usually the black, they're cheap now. That's an LW. Okay, just in time, so you just about to fall. All right. Despite the fact that one's black and one's not black, but they're both the same color, you would understand exactly what I'm getting at. Okay, so this is an LX400. And this right here is an LW400. There's a difference between these two. They're both 4,300 lumens, and they're both actually both 4,000 lumens each. Uh, one is actually a XGA, and one's a WXGA. So this one right here is the, one's a W, so this one's a WXGA, and one's a XGA. Do I have any more of these? Where's the other one at? I'm pretty sure I got another one around here too. I'm missing one. I'm actually missing one of these projectors. I'm supposed to have fuck, three of them. Yeah. What did I do with the other one? Did I throw it in the trash? Well, okay, I have to figure that out. It's in the house somewhere. I have no idea where it's at. All right, remember I told you about the bridges, right? See the bridge right here? See how this one doesn't have a bridge? This is the one you want to look for. When you're behind a Christie projector, you want to make sure you get the one without the bridge. It's a difference in the lens. That's a standard lens, as you can see. And that right there is a more advanced lens than this one. This one's going to give you a much more finer, more advanced, more finer tuned uh, um, image. But this one's going to be a standard image. That's how you know the bridges. That's how you find out. That's how you know. So next time you're going to buy a Chrissy, look for the one without the bridge. And I got to figure out where I lost the projector at. Because I really lost the projector. I have no idea. I had three of those. I think I threw it in the trash. Why would I throw it in the trash? I just going to just replace the lamp on it. The only thing I'm wrong with the lamp was having lamp issues. This is downstairs in the basement somewhere. All right, whatever. I figure exactly. It's probably on a shelf somewhere, and I forgot where it's at. I do that all the time. I stick them on shelves and forget where they're at, up there. Um, let me see. Projectors like this that you see right here that have no actual picture, don't go near them. I did that one already. Um, you'll get something that you don't want. I mean, it's rare you're going to get an actual projector because sometimes you'll get a projector that's pretty much badly busted up. Because you can't tell what's wrong with it. If you look at it, it's just a picture. How would you even know what's wrong with it? Stay away from these. 
these things are trash. I'm sorry for the eBay listing for the guy who's selling this, but sorry, that e that projector is trash. I've had one of those here. These projectors are very interesting. These projectors have no manual override. You have to have a remote control to get access to turning on and off the projector. If you don't have the original remote control that comes with it or remote control that comes with it, it's useless. I've had one. Don't know about these, but these are actually pretty good. This is mine right here. This is mine. This is my 585, but I need that one at the top. I don't even have the one. What's the difference between the 585 and the other one at the top? I wonder. I wonder if the other one at the top is a full 1080p. Because I would like to get this model on the 1080p model too. I have it in 720p. What's this one right here? This is the 45. No, I already had one of those before. Ooh, is that 680? For 200 bucks. What I got in this? This is this 1080p. I'm looking for the 1080p. It's a 1080p model of this, but I keep bumping it to the 720p. There's a laser um, Sony VPL FHZ7 700L. Oh man, it got some good stuff in here today. This is why I gotta stay away from eBay. I need another projector, like I need another hole in the head. But right now, I got an extra thousand dollars a day. I'm thinking about doing some shopping. I could use a couple dozen projectors right now. XGA now. What the freak? This is only XGA. Mine's beyond XGA. Mine's a WXGA. Why in the world I pay for this? This is a higher model. How does a higher model have a lower res? Something's wrong here. I don't even sound right. I mean, is that right? My the one I have in the next room is WXGA. How is this one not a WX? That's why I go back and check to make sure that they know exactly what they're talking about. Now sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. But I'm curious. That doesn't make any sense. How does the lower model have the better better re resolution count? Okay. Let's find up the specifications on this one, see what we got going on here. Oh, it's 3500 lumens. That explains a lot. Mine's not 3,500 lumens. Mine's like, um, I gotta go check mine out and see what mine is, but I know it's not 3,500 lumens. XGA is an XGA projector. It definitely is. It's right there. It's an XGA. But it's 3,500 lumens. It has a higher lumen count. All right, let's go back. It's a, this is what usually most people go through when they're researching projectors. It really doesn't make a difference which one you get at the end of the day, but you want to make sure you're buying exactly what you're getting at the end of the day. You make sure their specifications are right on matching with Projector Central, because you want to buy something to find out it's not what you paid for. You know, you don't want to go to that crap at the end of the day. But I'm just curious, this one right here is a 680. Mine's a, a, five, a 585, a 585, maybe a 585. So that's what I'm wondering. This is, this is uh, mine's a WXJ. I'm not really sure mine is exactly what it is too. All right, so let's come here and let's grab this one at the bottom. Let me see, 3,500 lumens. And mine is a 585. I want to get a Sony shirt though, projector. 32. 32 is not the one I was looking for. 595. I bet you 100 bucks has a cat jumping off of something somewhere. Usually he's, on, he's downstairs below me, so he's, he's probably jumping off of something. 160 bucks. Yeah, that's definitely him jumping up for something. Or probably fighting this fish. 160 bucks. This is not bad. This is a really good deal, too. That is a very good deal right there. 160 bucks. I do need a couple more Epson projectors. A 585. This is what I have the 585. I can use another one of those. All right, 585. Yeah, I thought so. This is the one I have in the next room. Mine's a 585. Mine's a WXGA. So WXGA and the other one's an XGA. So it's got to be more lumens. It has to have more lumens. So let me go down here at the bottom. I don't need to go in there because I'm pretty sure he's got his specifications right in here. Uh, 3,300 lumens. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I thought so. You get uh, you get two extra more lumens on the other one. All right. Yeah. Okay. But it's an, but it's an XGA over a WXGA. Mr. Mr. Olinoff, still a good deal. Still a good deal. I got, come on, we run projections in here, 600 by 800 by 720p. That's what the um, the ViewSonic is, and it runs perfectly. So I'm not worried about that. It's a good price. So, and I mean, it's under 200 bucks, which is what I like to shop for. I like buying projectors under $200. Let's come back over here and see what they got. That's not bad. That's a fantastic deal. This one looks amazing. We're going to fire this up on our screen paint to show you how amazing it looks on our screen paint. Um, actually... The project I was showing at the NECs, they have a, now this one so much doesn't have it. Like when you stand up upright, because the one I have in there is standing upright for tabletop displays. 
the keystone doesn't lay exactly flat to the table. It's okay, but it doesn't lay, lay exactly flat to the table. Now, the NEC versions, those particular projectors have an option that will allow you to use it for tabletop display. Oh, yeah. And the stand that comes with it, what a stand you have to buy, you can get it from Amazon, works in two different ways. You can set the projector on top, or it has an adapter where you can connect it to the side and you can project an image up under the table and through the table. Like, so say your table is glass, right? You can actually hook the projector up under the table so it pushes an image up right through the top of the table. Yeah, that projector has an option on it that does that. And it's 3,600 lumens with two HDMI ports on the back of it and they're under 200 bucks. So that's why I have five of them in the room. And I bought the stand to go with it. So it has a, 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 a setting where you can actually set it for a tabletop display. This one doesn't have it so much. It can be used, but it's still a little bit of a of, of a bit of a tilt to it, a little bit, just a little bit. But it kind of bugs me. This right here, I wouldn't touch this. Well, I'm gonna click on here for a minute, unless there's any pictures of it. But I'm about to say I wouldn't touch it. No, nope, again, I wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. There are no pictures of the actual physical projector. You got any pictures of the physical projector? No. So you need to know what you're getting yourself into when you're buying that projector. If there's any cracks in it, like I said, um, any scratches in the lens. If you get a scratch in your lens, just go down and get yourself some scratch repair. That's what I bought. If you get scratches on a projector, they have a scratch repair for plastic for cars. You can use the same thing on a projector. does the exact same thing. I have a, I have a version. I have one in black and I have one in white. Oh, let me see what else we got here. This is what I saw right here. This is what they're bidding on right now. So the bid has already ended. This is a scary bid, and I'll tell you why. There's no pictures of the physical projector. $200 pre-owned Philips uh, smart projector. This is the one that the customer had in one of my um, video my demonstrations, my picture demonstrations. He's actually displaying that projector right here. I was going to come in and buy this today. But the problem I had with it was the fact that Looking at the projector, I guess he doesn't have it there for bed. There it is right there. Looking at the projector, there are no um there are no pictures of the actual projector itself. There's only pictures of um and this I just see this one right here. This one picture they have right here. So what bothers me is the fact that why do you only have one picture? And that's not good. This is scratched right along there. The only thing that bothers me about having a, something scratch is the ultra short throughs. So it looks like it has some damage to it right here. But how much of it? Because the problem I have is the last two pictures they have in here are basically from Google. If somebody took it off a of Google um, image gallery and used this to display the projector, and then at the very end, they don't have the physical projector displayed that's the only problem i have with it i would have bought it somebody was putting down they had 18 dollars for economy shipping so somebody had it for going for bed at 200 dollars. had to drop 500 cleaned it and got it with no problem i knew nobody was going to drop over 500 on it they wouldn't have done that I would just outbid them gave the merchant some good money in his pocket and moved on but let's see if there is another one on here and how much money they want for it because that's what i'm looking for But what you don't want to do is you don't want to go near projectors that have just a picture itself and it doesn't have the physical picture of the projector. That's a problem because, like I said, anything can be wrong when you have cracks or blemishes. I had a projector come one time, there was a crack right down the middle of it. You don't want to go down that road. Um, you want to make sure that, um, that okay, so the Sony VPO FH36, 31s, and uh, 36s. If you want to get access to the twin mode, which allows you to do two images at the same time, you have to have the remote control. Without the remote control, it, you can't use it. You can't get access to the option. It doesn't show it in the display. You have to have the remote control to do it. So if you have the remote control, you can't use it. So good projector, like I said, you can't use it without that remote control. This is the remote control for the Sony, right here. You know how hard it is to get one of these bad boys? I've tried, trust me. I have three of these projectors. I literally tried to get another one of these. It's a bit of a nightmare. You see right there where it says twin mode? 
Yeah, that's the only way you get access to that feature to be to watch two images at the same time. You have to be to have the twin mode in order to do that. You have to have the remote control. You have to buy these from overseas and they're not cheap. They're like 150 bucks for one of those remote controls. If you can get your hands on one and if whoever you're buying it from is giving you legit remote control, you know, come back with something, some generic version of a remote control. Um, another thing too is when I'm looking for trying to hunt down the remote control that matches the projector, there's a whole lot of generic ones out there. That's something you have to be careful about. If you don't know exactly what the original remote control looks like, just basically just Google the um, projector, go on images, and one of the, it will pop up, trust me, of the actual uh, projector with the original remote control with it. And that way you can go from there when you're scouting to find the remote control that fits with it, because it's a lot of generic ones that basically would just have a serial number right across here. They won't have the actual name of the projector right there. So you have to make sure that you're getting the real deal and not a fake remote control because you don't want that crap either. I've been never done that one already. Uh, when you're buying projectors, especially when it comes to, man, we can do a whole segment on venue projectors. Venue projectors are something else. That is not something you can just go in and easy, oh, we just go buy this projector because you could buy a projector and end up paying thousands of dollars for a lens, thousands of dollars for the lamps. Lamps can be expensive, they can be hard to get, they might not have them here in the United States, you might have to buy them overseas. So a whole lot of stuff that can pop up. Let me see. I'm going to look this up, see if they got another one of these. I wish he had more pity. If he had the legit one, I would have bought it from right from the door, but I don't know about that right there. Honestly, at the end of the day. Let's see over here. Let's check this out for a minute, see if we have any of those pop up. Shouldn't I put a projector underneath all this, but you shouldn't notice the projector at the end of the day. I got my driver coming down in a few minutes to pick up my packages because I need her to come down and get the rest of the stuff right away so I can start on the next set of orders that are coming through. And again, thank you all for the support. I really appreciate it. These are the new ones right there. That's the new one. I hope it works out for them. I hope that projector does work out for me. They got one that's legit and they're good. I mean, they had talk to them. I hope they did. I hope it worked out for them. But me, on the other hand, I wouldn't touch up a 10-foot pole because... As I said before, I bought a projector because it, you know, because I'm, I've been thinking, you know, what's the worst that could happen? And yeah, the worst that happened came out of cracks in it, and lamp was missing, and the, um, all the warning lights were flashing off of it. It was a mess. All right, they don't have any in there. That's a hard projector to get, but still, it being a hard projector, I still wouldn't have gave him two hundred dollars if he had real pictures to it. And if it has some blemishes in it, whatever, you know, I don't care as long as it just functions and works. And you de definitely want to make sure that one of the, the gold mines is when you're buying a projector where someone actually has a projector turned on and they have it pointed at the wall that's good too because then you could get these uh what's that have that have these projectors sometimes with some projectors you get a little purple in some white areas around the screen and it only displays when you show purple that basically shows there's dust on the mirrors if you're using dlp or the, the mirror could be damaged Actually, that's what's going wrong with the LW650 in the next room. Mirrors are damaged. I have to I pay somebody to fix that projector right there. Nope, didn't find a match of it. So he's the only one who had it. All right. Um, so basically, it's it's not hard to navigate through um, through eBay. It really isn't. You just want to make sure you don't buy anything that doesn't have. You want to make sure you get the actual real picture of the projector. Like something like this, you don't have any pictures of it. How would you even know? If this was a used projector. And you hit the pictures with like the numbers brand new, then a brand new, I wouldn't trust it either, to tell you the truth. You have to see it physically what you're getting to. You need to be to zoom in on it and expect it. And without basically with this, you can't really do that. You don't even know what you're buying. I bet you if I Google this one for a minute, pictures, if I go back and I do a search on this, it probably comes up under probably um a search the image, Google search the image. See who has it. There you go. They got it right off of Google. I told you. Go back and hit your button. Hit the ser Google search the image, and that's where it'll pop up. Like, you go to any of my images, and you go Google search on it, it brings it right back to me. Comes right back to my YouTube channel. Comes right back to my website. Comes back to me. But if you go over here, and you click that back button, and hit that Google search on the image, and it comes back to here. <laughs> yeah, they, they took it off of here, and that's what they did. They put it on their page. That's what they did. So you don't know what the freak you're getting yourself into. I'm not going to be on there long. Like I said, I have drivers coming by and I got to get ready to process the new orders in a few minutes. Uh, I was on here searching for projectors, but I just see the bottom. The one guy who has a lot of those projectors, I'm getting six of those. 
I'm definitely getting six of those. That's a good deal. <clears throat> and they're HDMI, it's right from the door too. That's a good deal. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. If you're looking for lots, just put projectors and just put lots, L-O-T-S. It'll bring you up on a different section of eBay where they sell nothing but lots of projectors only. If you're looking to resell them. Ah, I hate these projectors. I do. I got a couple of these downstairs. I hate these projectors so much. These projectors have a kill switch in them. Did you know there's a kill switch in one of these projectors? I don't a particular model, but they have a kill switch. You can't exactly go in and replace the lamp, the lamp yourself. I did when I got one. I replaced the lamp. I was going to you know, click one off in the background. I was like, the frick was that? And I put it back in, and it wouldn't cut on for jack. You have to take that to the dealership or to the um the manufacturer for them to put that lamp in for you because there's actually a tamper switch on there. If you open that up, the projector doesn't work. I bought a bunch of these. That was a bad idea. I'm not a big fan of Mitsubishi projectors. I'm just not a big fan of their projectors at all, period. I don't like them. But even the new ones, I just don't like them. I don't know what the freak is. What the heck is a Polyvision? These are some of the, sometimes I get these from time to time. People come like, yeah, I got a Polyvision. No, 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 no. We can't support that. See this right here. Someone look at this like BenQ projector, short throw, 1080p. Look, look at the, look at the images on it. Again, I wouldn't go near it with a 10 foot pole. Let's go hit back. Let's go hit the Google search. Google search damage. See if it comes back here. Nope, comes back to Google. That's where it comes at. That's another thing you can do too. And check the images, make sure the images are where it's supposed to be. That's, I wouldn't go near this with a 10 foot pole because anything could be wrong with this. You could get a used projector. You can get a projector with constant cracks and scratches and everything in it. You definitely get that. All right, so pretty much, that pretty much sums it up when it comes to, my mouse just died. When it comes to buying projectors on eBay, you just want to make sure that the pictures are legit and they're owned by the people who actually took the pictures. Make sure there's enough pictures on there. Make sure when they take the pictures that you don't have half of the, um, sometimes when they take the pictures of the peripherals in the back of it, like the HMI and all that, they'll have it like halfway up or they're blurred a little bit so you really can't see what's back there. Um, I would just basically, if it, if it doesn't say HMI, you're not sure if it doesn't HMI, just go on to... Uh, to uh, Projector Essential, it'll tell you exactly what it has right from the door if you're not sure about the specifications that they put out on it. Sometimes it's not the merchant's fault. Sometimes the merchant doesn't know much about the projector and he's just putting the best of his ability on it. And you got some people in there that are pretty much putting things in that they shouldn't be putting there to begin with. Like if I were to go in and look for a Chrissy short throw. Uh, let me see. We're going to go with short throw projectors. Oh, the ultra short throw projectors. Let's do the ultra short throw projectors. I guarantee the Chrissy will pop up. There's a Chrissy in here that's claiming to be an ultra. This right here. This is what I'm really having an issue with. Look at this right here. Now, all the pictures are there. They got it legit. That's a good price for it. Right there. This is what I got a problem with. That lens is not a short throw lens. That's an ultra short throw lens. Now, the way you can find that out, if it is a short throw lens, you can actually go in to his specification sheet on the projector. Where's he got it at right here? Does he have the model number of the projector? Right there, he's the model number of the lens right there. So what you wanna do is, you wanna basically take this whole section right here, right here, just put down lens, that's all you need. And let's search and figure out if this is really what it's supposed to be. So let's see. Somebody will bring it up. And this is how you'll find out whether or not if that lens is actually a short throw lens, ultra short throw lens. See what it says right there? There's the lens right there. It says zoom fixed focus. This is a, a wide angle zoom lens. That's not an ultra short though lens. It's a wide angle zoom lens, which means being a zoom lens and a standard lens are two different lenses. So the zoom lens basically is one I told you about that it's designed that you have it for a uh, 
a, a real theater, dedicated theater room setup. This is the one you have in the booth in the back. They're not mounted to the ceiling. It's, it's a booth in the back, and they're designed basically to shoot this narrow, thin image across your theater room and to hit your screen. Or if you had a regular standard lens, that would expand out into the walls, the ceilings, the back of the chairs, and everything. But that was this 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 one's for. Now I had one of these on the uh, Sony DPL F836, but it's not a wide. This one's a wide zoom lens. So in the description right here, where it says the throw lens, which is 0.8-1, so and so forth, which we have right here. We researched that same lens right there. See right there, we researched that same lens. See what came up in here? Now sometimes the lenses can be made by Panasonic. They can be made by a different company. They don't have to be made by Chrissy. They can be made by a different company. I get parts basic on my Christie proje projector that are made by Samsung. Okay, so this lens right here is a zoom fixed lens, motorized, and this lens is for a wide angle lens. That's why it's so wide. The one I have in the next room is not a wide angle lens, it's narrow. So you're not actually getting a ultra short throw lens to begin with, you're basically getting a standard lens. So that's a bunch of bull. Because if you saw what, if it was a, an, uh, an ultra short though lens, let me see. Bring it this right. Chrissy 505W, but you want to go with the, not the 505W, you want to go with the, um, you want to go with the ultra short though lens. That's what a lens looks like for a Chrissy. See that weird, weird shape lens? See how it fits in the front? It connects in the front and it goes to the back. That's an ultra short though lens for a high-end projector. That's what they look like. They're weird looking. See right there? That's what they look like. See the price tag underneath of them? I told you they're expensive. They're very, very expensive. Look at the one right here for this projector, like $15,000. They're no joke. They're very expensive. So that's what this lens would look like. The lens wouldn't be in the front. You would never see the lens in the front like this. It would be in the back right here. That's how it would be. So if it says an ultra short the lens, this is what it should be looking like. Let's go to our images real quick so you can see the setup real quick. My cord over here is having a field day with my stand. That's why I'm fighting so back over here. My cord's fighting. This is what they look like. These are ultra short though lenses for Christie projectors or any kind of venue projector has an interchangeable lens. So if you have a lens on your projector that can, you can pull it out, this is what an ultra short though lens should look like. Not what you saw there. That right there is a either standard or it could be a short though lens. It could be a short though lens, yeah. It could be a standard lens, yes. But to be an ultra short though lens, no. Mm -mm. And the projector would be a whole lot more expensive than that because look at the lens, how much it costs. It costs more than the projector. The projector he's selling it for is like $800. Now, a standard lens or a standard zoom lens, you can get those for like probably about $500, $600. Maybe you get them for $3. Maybe you get them for $8. Depending on where you're going at, you can get them for cheaper. But this is a whole different world right here. These things are expensive. I have three Christie projectors in here that have interchangeable lenses. You think I would have had one of these by now? They cost a couple thousand dollars. There you go. Five grand. That's what they run for. They're not cheap. They're very, very expensive. That's what one of those lenses costs. So if that was a short throw lens, it would have looked like this. Right there. So you would be connecting this to the front of your projector and the lens would be in the back. You would turn your projector around the other way around. So that's how it would be set up. I remember these right here. These are the ones. That, this is a panorama, panorama, panorama or panorama, whatever it's called. This is the lens that allows you the projector to have a 235.1 setup right there. So it's an adapter piece that slides in the front and allows you to convert your projector from a 1610 to a 235.1. That's why I said people who basically talk about venue projectors don't even know what they're talking about. They don't know the first thing about venue projectors at all, period. They don't even know, people don't realize that. Not saying that every, not certain people, but I'm talking about, you know about certain people, individuals, who talk about how their products are 
venue projector. They don't know, you're talking about venue projectors. You don't know nothing about venue projectors at all. And you're talking about, uh, you don't know about the fact that they're interchangeable lenses. Uh, some have dual lamps. There's a whole lot of things people don't know about these particular projectors. Look at the price tag on that bad boy right there. That's $12,000 right there. Is it even at $12,000? But yeah, now it depends on what kind of lens you're dealing with. Now, these are interchangeable. But then you have the ones that are not interchangeable. You have the ones you either have to take apart the projector to actually put the lens in. These are the ones that actually run off ribbons. You have two to one. one, one okay, let me explain this to you real quick. It's kind of hard for you to understand this one right here. So you have two of them. One's I call the nightmare install. One's the easy install. All right. That's fun. This right here. Easy install. Somewhat easy install. I still have to take apart my projector to get this one. This one has a short though lens attached to it. The short though lens for this one is 500 bucks, much cheaper. But I have to take apart the projector to get access to it. And I'm praying it does, it's not working with ribbons. The ribbons are nightmares. This is what I'm talking about by ribbons. This is a short though lens for Chrissy. See those ribbons right there on top of it? You got to feed these ribbons to these little tiny uh, little uh, slots. There's about three of them. Uh, yeah, and um, they, these, are, these are very, very, very easy to rip. So this is a different one you have to install in a headache. This is an absolute headache. This one's taking ribbons too also too. This one has to be installed where you have to open up the projector and you have to remove the motherboard. It's like, you know, you have an old finished Jaguar, you gotta take apart things to get the other stuff. That's what you're pretty much gonna be doing with this. You're gonna have a whole lot, whole lot of stuff on your table because you have to take apart the entire projector just to install this thing in. Yeah, that's a nightmare one. That's a light one. This one, on the other hand, is an easy one. This is a quick release, but this one is easy. So, oh man, let me bring this one down. Things I do for you people. This one, oh, this one is a quick release. See that little button at the top? So if I want to change up my lens, I don't know how I'm going to do this for you guys. I really don't know how I'm going to do it at the same time. I'm supposed to get the bendy stand. I know. I forgot. I keep forgetting to get it. I'm going to hold it this way. That's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. When I get my new one, put it in there. Done. Same way. Lock it in. Done. Well, I like those. So when I shop for a projector, I look for those that have the quick release that you can take out in no time at all, put it back in, be done. The other one, on the other hand, I'm just going to get the, I, I can do it, but I just have to get the time and the patience to do it because it's going to be a headache. Taking it out the first place was a headache. Putting it back in is going to be another headache, but it's a short throw lens. That is a crazy short throw lens and they're really expensive, especially that particular model. All right, so now you know what the short throw lens is supposed to look like. So next time when you go in there and you see one of those projectors and it says in the ultra short throw lens, you can go, gee, that's not an ultra short throw lens because at the end of the day, that is the ultra short throw lens. That's what it's supposed to look like right there. So if he had that lens in there to begin with, that projector was no way in the world up in $800. It would have been a lot more than that. Or what he would have done was he would have removed the lens and basically put in a cheap standard lens. That's what he would have done. Usually that's what most of them will do. You can go to the top of that right here. No, that the fill up stuff wasn't it. I wasn't even close to it. Whatever well, these windows open. Oh, I'm just going through one. Just get rid of that one. Do you want to use that one? Uh, get rid of that one. I'm using that one. Get rid of that one. I'm using that one. That's this room right here. There, this is a Chrissy. That's the Chrissy right there. Yeah. So, yeah. So now you know, because anybody else who looked, saw this, they saw the wide lens on it and they would have bought it and thought they were getting an ultra short throw lens. You're not even getting a short throw lens. It's an, it's not even a short throw lens at all. It is a, um, a standard uh, zoom lens and it's wide angle. That's it. So all you're doing is just basically just getting an extended throw lens that just has a wide angle on it. That's basically about it. So the difference between is that is the Sony has one of theirs. The Sony, the ones look exactly like, usually when you have the extended lens, they're like this far out from the projector, but the Sony, the one they have, is it's, it's flat against the projector. You really wouldn't be to tell if you were looking at that one in the standard one, you wouldn't be to tell. They look exactly alike. Okay, I'll just show you that real quick. 
there's no way you're, gonna, you're just going to read up on it and figure out exactly what you're getting because I didn't read up and I bought this projector but I still use it but I bought this projector and didn't realize what I was getting so look at the Sony's over there look at the lenses on the Sony one of these is an extended uh, um, long throw lens and one is a standard that one right there is an extended long throw lens this is the standard this one comes out just a little bit more than this one, but you wouldn't be able to tell that if you're on eBay at all, period. So this lens right here, if I were to shoot this across the room, would pretty much give me a smaller image. But yet, if I was going to use this in a booth, in a theater room, and have it 30 feet back, and when it comes out, I'll be able to hit my screen perfectly right up on the stage with no problem without hitting the wall here, or hitting the wall here, or the back of the seats. It wouldn't expand out all over the place. This one, on the other hand, being a standard, pull that back 30 feet, that's going to hit the walls, the ceiling, everything. No matter how much I pull the lens in, I'm still pull the zoom in, I'm still going to hit everything. This one's designed for those particular movie theaters with the booth. This one right here. But they're both Sony's. That's an FH36, and that's an FH30. Um, pretty much I can tell you about those right there. Uh, actually, this one right here, the FA36, is 5200 lumens, and this one's actually 43, right there. But that's if you're shopping for that projector. But at the end of the day, let's say, say what the lens is, you wouldn't know what it was if you were staring right at them. You'll know the difference when you get it home. You would definitely know the difference because when I went to pull it back for a 100-inch screen, I had it at 12 feet, and the screen was so small. It was like a 40-inch at 12 feet. I'm like... What in the world? Why am I freaking at? I got it pulled all the way up. I got the lens up. It's still 40 inch at 12 feet. It should be at least 100 inches. And then I found out what kind of lens was in it. And I figured I had to be at 18 feet in order to acquire a, a 100 inch. Where the other one only requires 12. Now that's designed for a longer throw. But that one has a wide lens on it. I wonder if that has a 235.1 option on it for that. But yeah, this right here, nice projector and all. I would still buy it at the end of the day because, like I said, it's a Christie projector. I love Christie projectors, but the lens is not what it is. It's not even a short throw lens at like that. You're just getting a standard lens. So let's go to the big boy projectors. Let's go to barcode. Uh, the nasty navigation through barcode. Or just high-end venue projectors. The venue projectors. All right, so the venue projectors. Now, venue projectors can come in different forms of nightmares. I can put it this way. Now, saying they're all nightmares, you should be careful what you buy at the end of the day. At least know what you're buying at the end of the day. You can end up with something where anything that comes with a roadhouse case is going to be a big, big, big projector. You will not be mounting that to your ceiling. That is not going to happen at the end of the day. Unless I have one of these right here. I actually had this projector right here. I've had this projector. You're not plugging this into your wall socket. This is a commercial projector. I have one of these. I can show you the YouTube video where I bought it, did the unboxing, plugged it into my outlet, and it nearly burnt out my fuse box. This is a commercial projector. That's why I got that battery pack from. I bought the battery pack to run this because it turned into a nightmare because I bought the projector, found out it didn't have outlets to be able to run it in the house, and I was gonna hire an electrician to come out. They were gonna charge me $75 just for a set for showing up on the site, 75 bucks. Not including the hourly rate I would have paid to have them go in and install the outlet that had to be connected to the box, or it had, I was gonna have, no, I was gonna have it on a separate, I didn't wanna connect it to the box, I wanted it on its own separate line, and I wanted a breaker attached to it, just in case, you know, someone, someone, someone tear my own box. So that was going to cost me a lot of money just for this projector. And I only paid $500 when I got mine. Mm -mm -mm, man. Yeah, but that's only used if you got the commercial use. If you got the high power outlets to run it, hey, yippee ki -yay, have a ball with it. Other than that, that thing right there, I didn't realize what it was. And then I had to send it back. Now, got to be kind of expensive. These you can run in the house with no problem. These particular ones. Certain ones you can run in the house. Oh, look at the lens on that sick and monster. Oh, wait a minute. We have this projector. It's a, uh, yeah, Super SVGA. See right there? That's what that stands for. Super XVGA. That's what that stands for. You can run this in your house with no problem. I got one in the back behind me right there. Um, mm -mm -mm. Large venue projector. Yeah, you ain't running that. Let me see if that runs with the road. It comes with freight. Standard pickup. Local pickup. 
So the shipping ain't bad on it. So this is not a big boy right here. Shipping on this one is only $146. That's cheap. Trust me, it gets worse. When you start seeing freight charges of three and four hundred dollars, you got a refrigerator coming to your front door. That's literally what you have coming to your door is a refrigerator. That's not that big. That's actually a good size. No, that's not really that big. That's not bad. Not bad. Look at the look at the price they went for it. It's a nice one too, man. It's a nice one. Short though lens. Like I said, now again, when you're researching your lens, just go down to the bottom. They'll specify the lens. Where's the lens at? You should have a specification of the numbers for the lens. If it has 7,000 lumens, so don't walk in front of that. You'll definitely get jacked up at the end of the day. Where's your lens at? They should have a specification. They should have a specification on what kind of lens you have in there. Just copy and paste the lens. Go to Google search, bring it up, and they'll tell whether or not if that lens is exactly what it's supposed to be. That's something you really have to be careful with when it comes to venue projectors, that you're actually getting the real freaking lens that comes with it, or that lens is what it is. Because they could throw, remember, these are interchangeable lenses. They could throw anything in there they want. So you have to make sure that you are getting the lens that they said it came with. Because I had that happen to me already before. I bought a projector, said short the lens, really didn't check up on it too much. I bought it anyway, or what the heck, it was cheap. Got it here, it wasn't even what it, what it was supposed to be. But at least the lens is not going to cost me a lot of money if I were to go in and basically get another one. These are the monsters right here. Chris, you look at that for this one right here. Yeah, they don't even have free local pickup, free economy shipping. They're going to ship this to you free. Oh, I forgot it's Christmas time. Everybody's being good. I did 3,800 lumens for this one. So you have to make sure when you're buying these bigger projectors, say you want to do an outdoor vent, um, you don't want to spend a couple thousand dollars. You want to spend 10, 20, 30,000 dollars for a projector. These are fantastic for that. If you're doing backyard events, they're fantastic for it. Good investment. Um, just want to make sure that you're not getting your hands on a commercial. Make sure it's not a commercial projector because if you plug that into the house or if you plug that into a power pack, it's going to eat through your power pack. The commercial projector that I had, my battery source was around, it was like 1800 an outlet, only got two hours out of it. Two hours to run that projector because it ate so much power. So you want to make sure that, is this coming to Roadhouse case? Another thing too, make sure they don't come, if they come to Roadhouse case, it's a pretty good size projector too. But then again, the one I got up there now is comes to the Roadhouse case and that's, uh, that one, it's not that bad. So I was like, can you buy it, but then you ultra short throw. No, you can't. You have to buy the lens. That you're at the mercy of buying the lens. Let me see. NEC has them. NEC has the big venue projectors right there. See right there? NEC has a large venue projector, 6,000 lumens. Ooh, look at this one right here. Sony, Sony, Sony. Oh, that's gorgeous. 10,000 lumens. Oh, can you imagine walking in front of that? Boy, I'm telling you, yeah, you, you would look just like Raiden coming. Your eyes would be, your freaking retinas would be freaking white when you come in the house. My goodness, just jack you up. Right you better make sure you got that mount somewhere really high. You walk in front of that, yeah, that'll be your day. That'll be your day. Look at that. And again, come on, we got these. Yeah, you got the actual pictures with it. Oh, look at the display panel in the back. Good gracious. Whew, that's a lot. That's a freaking lot to learn. What they got for the price on it. They got um, what's the what's the shipping on this bad boy? Oh, how much wait, how much do you want for this again? I could use a ten thousand lumen projector for work. I could. It's not a bad price too, especially yeah, it, yeah. They're worth one hundred twenty k. Okay, with lens, yeah, that's right. That's about right. About one hundred and twenty k. That's just about right at ten thousand lumens. But I want to see what they got, how they got this for pickup. Sometimes, some, like the CRTs, I'm trying to get myself a CRT projector. If you've seen those, are massively huge. Those are the ones that have the red and they have the blue and green. Usually, with most of them, you have to come pick it up. They're not shipping that to you. It just costs too much money to ship one of those things. And it's like get, trying to ship a vending machine. Literally, your shipping cost is going to be insane. So where's the price at it? There's, yeah, look at the case on that thing. That comes with the Roadhouse case, with the case. You're going to ship that whole case to you, just like that. I like this right here. It looks like Optimus Prime. Look at the tip of Optimus Prime's gun. 
I would just call it Optimus. Let me see if I'm trying to figure out what they, what you cost for shipping this bad boy. What you charging? Free local pickup. I thought so. Uh-uh. They're not shipping this to you. It's too expensive. It's too big. Look at that. Right from the door. You got to go pick that bad boy up. Hmm. The only way, the only way you can work that out, you're going to have to contact the merchant and say, hey, look, you know, I'll send you a certain amount of dollars, such and so and so. You know, I want you to drop it off at this freaking um, 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 freight hub and I'll take care of it from there. Once it's there, you can actually take care of it from there. You just need him to take it from A to B. And you'll basically just pay for his gas or whatever, give him a little extra money, whatever, and say, look, I just need you to drop this off at this particular hub here. Send me over the information when, you know, so it's something I'll reimburse you. Then you pay him right up front or whatever way you want to do it. But that's going to be some serious trust because at the end of the day, like I said, things should go wrong with that one. He could keep everything from there. So I don't know. But that this right here, I like. I mean, the fact that the price on that, I wish he had shipping on this, but that's not a bad price. I could get that today. Oh, I like this right here. But I know for a fact that there's no way in the world for me to plug this into the house. This is not going into the house. This will burn my house out. So I'm definitely going to have to probably cough up the extra $200 to have an electrician come in, maybe a little more than that, to install them, whatever I need. I need two outlets. I need one for outside, one for inside. That's a good investment right there. $4,000 is a good investment. And 10,000 limits. I could use that outside for work. Because right now I have a contract I'm working on with a um with a uh, with a with a few movie contracts on setting up drive through movie screens and this projector would be perfect. All right, Mr. Birds won't have to save this because Mr. Birds might come back and buy one of these. Buy, I don't even like buy this today. I'm gonna save that right there. Cause I this is I need this for work. I think it's a bad price. Four grand is not a it's not a bad price. It could be way worse than that. And these are Sony's too. It's gorgeous. Oh, that's gorgeous right there. Just remember, don't walk in front of the darn thing. Cause you know I me, mean? I don't I don't mind projectors. I'll walk in front of it like, why are your eyes look like that? Walk in front of the projector outside. Look at that thing, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I like that. All right, let me get on out of here. I took not out of here, out of here. My driver hasn't gotten here yet. I don't want to look up the barcode. I would love to get my hands on a barcode, at least before I die. I want one of them. Barcodes are so freaking expensive. Oh, here we go. We just found it. He's talking about Speak of the Devil. All right. So this is a barcode right here for 500 bucks. Right here. Like, Ken, that's not expensive. Uh, 500 bucks for the barcode. Look, I told you. No lens. They pull the lens out of these automatically. Lens is gone. Sometimes what they'll do is when you get some of these projectors like this, They'll take the picture. It looks a little blurry, like they'll do it from a distance. So you really can't see if the lens is there or not. And sometimes they'll turn it on to make it look like it's activated and the lens is actually the actual lens in there. But there's no lens in there at all. So what you got to look for is you got to look for four screws. There's one here, there's one there, and there's two on this side. If you see those four screws, you can actually see them, see them like this. That lens is gone. It took the lens out. Now, what do they want for shipping on this one right here? This freight. You got to contact the seller. So you're not going to be, yeah. It's, it's probably, I'm going to see exactly what it would cost me. Okay, so I get this 500 bucks and I want to get a lens for it. How much would it cost me for a lens for this particular projector? So I'm going to go back and see how much would it cost me if I want to get a lens for this bad boy. Get a brand new lens for it. So we'll go over here and we'll put in right there. I see if I want the lens. How badly would the lens cost me? Maybe I'll get a good deal on the lens. God, you freaking see, I told you. I told you from the door. Freaking nightmare city. This people is how much the lamp costs. You ready for this? You're looking at this, right? That's the lamp for that projector. So at this point, <laughs> my, my people are here to go pick up the packages. That's that's what that's what the lens is gonna cost you. That ain't too bad. That lamp could your lamp blow out. That's what it's gonna cost you to replace it. I gotta get out of here. Thank you all for your time. I gotta drop packages off and get you guys taken care of. Gotta go and God bless. Good gracious, $15,000 for a 